Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. Today's piece of news comes from onenews.co.nz. This is about a camera manufacturer, Canon, that decided to go out of their way to be dicks to a customer who just wanted some parts for a very basic repair. And this is the type of thing that I think is going to start going mainstream more often as right to repair starts to reach that tipping point where instead of pushing the boulder up the mountain, it's finally kind of starting to just roll down the other side with its own momentum and gravity. And this is a beautiful thing to see. Normal, average, everyday people getting tired of the world that we live in enough to start asking for it to change. Difficulty getting spare parts is leaving some do-it-yourself loving Kiwis frustrated. That includes Sarah Smith from Canterbury, who faced an uphill battle when she tried to source screws from Canon to fix her second-hand camera. By the way, she does have a really cool YouTube channel called Cheaper Ways New Zealand, and I'll leave a link to it down below. It's got a lot of really cool stuff on it, and I think you'll enjoy her channel. The screws had come loose from her camera from the display screen on the back of hers. She tried to find the screws at a hardware store, but with no luck, she went directly to Canon. The company said she was best to send her camera to the service team in Auckland to ensure a quality repair. And because the job might not be so straightforward if internal screws were missing. She had a screw loose on the back of her camera. Smith wasn't impressed. She runs a YouTube channel on a Facebook page called Cheaper Ways New Zealand, which is full of cost-saving tips and overflowing with ideas on how to do it yourself everything, from pizza bases to playground equipment. I thought I literally need two screws. I have a screwdriver already. She told Canon she was happy to pay for postage and she felt capable of carrying out her own repair. Canon's technical team said it was best to send it in for assessment and repair. This would be free under warranty, but Smith had an old second-hand camera and the warranty had run out a long time ago. According to Canon, Normal cost in cases like this are $45 for an assessment, which could be waived if it was quick, and then likely a cost of $67.50 for this particular repair. It's not so much the cost of the postage, it's paying someone to do something I could easily do myself, and being without a camera for a week or two weeks or however long it takes to fix it, Smith said. Consumer head of testing Paul Smith said if you want to repair it yourself or take it apart or use an independent repairer, then that's your responsibility. All they're doing is obstructing that. Fair Go contacted Canon, offering to take the screws to Sarah Smith, but Canon stood firm. So the newspaper said, listen, if you don't want to send to the screws, we will pick up the screws. We will absolve you of accountability and responsibility and deliver them to this woman ourselves. They still said no. It said Sarah Smith should send it into their Auckland service team for the best outcome due to the potential difficulty of the job. A screw came loose and fell out. She needs the screw to put back in. Paul Smith didn't buy it. It's not a high-tech fix that Canon needs to do themselves. There's no reason an independent repairer wouldn't be able to fix it to the standard expected by a consumer. There's no reason that an independent repairer cannot take a screw and do this. Consumer is a strong advocate for the right to repair movement and said one barrier that it's not in the best interest of manufacturers to make parts available because if they control repairs, they get extra income by doing those repairs. Now, just my opinion here. I don't think that Canon is getting rich from people that are paying them $45 to reattach loose screws to 10 or 20 year old cameras. I don't think this is something where somebody there was going, yes, control it all. So because they really want to make money off of the screws. I think they want to make money off of the higher tier repairs and the policies they put in place that don't allow other people to be able to get access to parts just so happen to apply to screws as well, and this is one of those cases of malicious compliance where they're saying, well, this is our policy and you must follow our policy. I don't believe that they really are looking, like they're really that greedy. They need that $45 for their screw repair. I think it's something like somebody who is just following a very strict script at a company that has a very strict culture that does not allow them to do the one-off things like this. Uh, but that doesn't change the outcome. That doesn't change the fact that we have a culture where all of those repairs must be done by the manufacturer, where they don't make parts in anything like this available, where you don't get that touch that you used to get even 10 or 20 years ago. Canon said it does provide spare parts to customers in some cases, and that for items such as a few screws, they may be provided for free. Well, if they would be provided for free, why won't you offer them to her if she's willing to pay for them? Sarah Smith might have stood her ground and asked to be sent the screws, but Canon then made her a generous offer that she couldn't refuse. It said they would pay for the repair and the postage and send her a replacement camera to use while hers was being fixed. Yeah, I'm sure that that's what happens to every normal average consumer that does not contact a major news outlet and get attention. Of course, they give this service to everybody. She considered that a brilliant result for herself, but added, it feels as though it wouldn't be doing this if it hadn't come to you guys and you don't want every man and his dog, and I'm sure Canon don't either, coming to Fairgo for a free camera repair. And at the end of the day, you have to keep in mind, she wasn't asking for a loaner camera, and she wasn't asking for a free repair. What she was asking for is the ability to purchase a screw to a product that she owned.
and because we live in the fucked up world and society that we currently do, that's asking too much. What I really like about this is that somebody whose channel, whose interest is, again, how to make cream cheese from milk powder, how to freeze potatoes into fries, this is not a repair-centric channel. It's just a normal person that tries to live a normal, cool life, saving money with tips on how to save money here and there, again, insulation, and these boards, sleep out, build up. They're just a person, just average everyday person just wants to save money, that's realizing. We do not live in the world that I grew up in. And the more people that realize this, the more people that have these aggravating experiences, the more people that will be converted to being a fan and proponent of right to repair. One of the biggest issues that we have is that average ordinary people don't even recognize how much has been taken away from them. And as much as I want people to have good experiences with repair, I want people to have great experiences with everything that they buy and everything that they own with every company that they deal with. I think to some extent, people are going to have to start having negative experiences like this to understand why it's an issue. Because every now and then, you'll see a Reddit thread where something like this gets mentioned and somebody says, I don't know what these people are complaining about. What's the point? Oh, another complaint about this. They really don't get it because they've never had to face it. Maybe they haven't needed to have any of their things fixed yet. Maybe they're affluent enough that anytime something they own stops working, they can just afford to buy a new one. But more people need to understand the problem. And the best way to understand the problem is personal frustration when somebody tells you you have to be without your stuff for two weeks because you're too stupid to screw in a screw. This will do it. By the way, just to end the video, um, for those of you who are curious why it is I choose to use Sony cameras, I almost exclusively use Sony cameras for both the store, my house, the overhead camera. They have a website where I was able to find an HDMI port to a camera that had been discontinued over 10 years ago that I still use. I use at work, I have a Sony... Crap, I actually forgot the model number of it. It's in the top of my NEX EA50. It's the NEX EA50. This is an old, old camera. Like, very, very old camera. As in, it records, like, you know, 18 megabit per second video internally, and you can only get good picture quality out of it using the HDMI out. But they still sold every single part to that camera. When I say every single part, I mean individual little flex cables, and they also make available to the consumer these 80-page manuals that have every single piece of information on how to disassemble the camera, every single screw, and there was even some electrical schematics in there. It was absolutely amazing to me. I don't think that Sony makes this available for all of their stuff. I think it's primarily for some of the higher-level equipment, but the fact that they make that stuff available makes me feel comfortable in purchasing their products, that if I to drop one or two or three thousand dollars on a camera that that is an investment that will last me a long time and you're not going to do everything you can to wean me off of the old one and just to show my respect to sony for doing that i'm willing to pay a premium for their camera equipment over the camera equipment of other manufacturers that do petty shit like what canon did because i think that these business models should be rewarded sony's website that allows you to purchase these components being honest with you it does look like it was put together in 1997 and hasn't been updated since but i still have respect for the fact that they maintain that website. The parts ship very quickly. And again, I paid something like $30 for an HDMI port assembly. It was like $15 or $30 uh, total, somewhere around there, for the HDMI port, plus the ribbon cable it's on and everything else. And you may think, oh my God, that's so much money. Dude, they made a part available to a camera that was discontinued like a decade ago, and they still keep that in stock somewhere where I can buy it. I'm more than happy to pay for that. And uh, there are companies that do try to do things right in these areas. And as much as we talk about companies that do shitty things, I'd also like to highlight when a company does a good thing. And that's about that. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. And do check out this channel. I'll leave a link in the description. Seems like a very cool person with a very cool personality.